Special Planning Commission meeting to order. We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. I abstain. Okay. First uh, commission matters is uh, approval of resolution 2015-01, amended resolution 2014-56, New Mexico Finance Authority, a loan to Estancia Valley Solid Waste Authority. May I have a motion, please? I move to approve the resolution. I have a second. I would be to approve the amended resolution. Yep. Approve the amended resolution. Motion to approve the amended resolution 2014-56. I'll second that. All in favor? I, I, I. Yeah, the oh, discussion. 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 Sorry, we'll go into discussion. We're in discussion. I want to start with 
Open Meetings Act, compli compliance checklist, and uh, I, I'm afraid we are in violation uh, of uh, Open Meetings Act because there are two types of meetings, non-emergency non meetings and emergency meetings. And uh, it is not regular meeting. What is the emergency to conduct this meeting? I believe the emergency is that this loan is going to be to a finance authority by a certain time, and we're running short of time. Actually, this was just called as a special meeting. It's not an emergency meeting. And a special meeting has to have 72 hours notice in order for it to be compliant with Open Meetings Act. It was, the agenda was put out by noon on Friday. So by noon today, we have 72 hours. I don't see any special meeting in Open Meetings Act. There are only two types of meetings non-emergency meetings and emergency meetings. And under emergency meetings, it says, under limited circumstances, an emergency meeting may be held with little advance notice if the public body did not expect the circumstances given rise to the meeting. And if the public body does not act immediately, injury or da damage to persons or property or substantial financial loss to the public body is likely. I, I don't think that uh, we are in compliance with Open Meetings Act. Well, Commissioner Ducharme, with, with respect, uh, the county is permitted to have regular commission meetings as well as special commission meetings. And you can call special commission meetings upon 72 hours notice when there are matters that, uh, that any commissioner deems uh, necessary to hear outside of a regular board meeting. So uh, the statutes do provide for special board meetings. And, uh, yeah, assuming that the uh, notice of this meeting was posted and is indicated uh, by Friday you noon, know, it does comply with the notice requirements of the open meetings act. Um. Mr. Warren, where can I find this uh, description of special meeting, uh, the requirements for it? I'll be more than happy to provide that to you. Uh, if, if you it, 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 I don't have it with me today okay. to cite you the statute number or, or the provision, but I can certainly provide that to you. Uh, if not this afternoon, if I get back to office in time, if, if not this afternoon, first thing. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Wollen, you you assure us that this meeting is a, a court, uh, doesn't violate Open Meetings Act? It's my opinion that this meeting does not violate the Open Meetings Act. Resolution, I think, was read by the previous commission. I, I'm probably the only one here that uh, was on that board. Uh, Mr. Frost, have you read uh, this resolution? Um, except for the last page, it got done. But I was going to comment. Uh, mm -hmm. It was approved by the last commission, correct? Yes. And, uh, I feel that we Could you speak a little louder, please, without the mics? It's hard to hear you. Thank you. Mr. Woolen, last time this resolution was approved, uh, two, 
entities were included or mentioned in this uh, resolution as political subdivisions. Is it correct? The, the substantive, or the, the resolution that was approved, I think at the December 10th meeting, included uh, Guadalupe County and Santa Rosa. My understanding, and I've reviewed, I didn't review it today, but I've reviewed it at our, at our board meeting, the only changes in the resolution that was approved on December 10th and the amended resolution that's before the board today is that Guadalupe County and the city of Santa Rosa have been deleted from it. But there's no substantive change in the resolution. Yeah, but my question, or maybe my point is, that when this resolution was approved, at that time those entities weren't political uh, subdivisions of... Uh, and they weren't... Uh, they weren't political subdivisions... Um, They weren't part of joint powers agreement. That's correct. They weren't part of, uh, of the joint powers agreement. But uh, the resolution was approved anyway, as they were uh, part of it. No, the resolution, as I recall from December 10th, was approved contingent or subject to a condition subsequent, which was that there would be action by, I think at that point in time, the city of Moriarty to uh, approve the joint powers agreement. So it was it was approved contingent on that, and that was uh, I think that was the exact language that we used. It was a condition uh, that a condition precedent to our approval, Orange County's approval, would be the uh, ratification of the joint powers agreement. Uh, where did you put that uh, contingency? Where, where did you show it that that contingency uh, it existed or was existed? My memory was it was in the motion. I didn't put it. Do you want me to go find the minutes? minutes of December 10th. Under the action for the resolution, it just reads, Commissioner Candelaria makes the motion to approve resolution 2014-56. Madam Commissioner Tapia seconds the motion. No further discussion. Commissioners vote two in favor, one against. So uh, there is no mention of uh, any contingency. That wasn't in the motion. I remember us discussing it. So I, I don't, I mean, I understand your point. I don't know that it's, it really has, go ahead. There is some other language in here. <coughs> Initial discussion, it reads, Mr. Joseph Ellis, Mr. Joseph Ellis speaks. In 1998, when the landfill was opened, they acquired a Caterpillar 816 compactor that had accumulated 18,000 hours in May and went into disrepair. 
It is not repairable. Since that time, they've been using the 826 compactor that Vaughn contributed when they joined the authority. It's an aging machine and not reliable for continued use. The EBSWA board made application approximately three months ago to the DFA to replace the 826 with a new Caterpillar 826 on a government contract. The authority has approximately 550000 in their capital outlay fund. The board dedicated 300000 as a down payment on this purchase. They're borrowing the remaining 418000 from the DFA, which includes a $41,000 end payment that they require for security. I believe that language is supposed to be NMFA, but these are the approved minutes. So, Chairman Freiberger asks if the JPA has been signed. Mr. Ellis replies that three of the member entities have signed the amended JPA and it is not yet in effect. Chairman Freiberger states that he has been told by his own legal advisor that it is not legal to pass and sign these documents until the amended JPA is in effect. Mr. Wallen, County Attorney, comments that he has not researched this issue. He thinks the former JPA is still in place, but he does not speak for the EBSWA and does not give them legal advice. Mr. Ellis comments that this is a document that was prepared for the NMDFA by Sutton Fair and Brown of Albuquerque and is based on nine member entities, the current and the new, that will be members of the authority at closing. Mr. Wallen states he believes that the commission can sign this. It's not going to be submitted until everyone signs it, including Moriarty. And we're not sure what Moriarty is going to do yet with regards to the JPA, but this commission has signed off on the amended JPA and is part of it. So there was discussion about Moriarty. That's my memory. Moriarty signed off. At that point in time, the JPA was still in the process. And that we were doing this as a based on a condition that that JPA be approved. Should the condition, should that condition be in the resolution? Be in the resolution. I don't, I don't believe so. I don't believe that it's necessary that it be in the resolution. You're obviously asking questions that might require me to do a little bit more research on that particular issue. I think, though, that what is at hand is whether or not there are substantive changes and whether or not the commissions have the opportunity to consider the substance of the resolution. And I think that the prior commission had considered that. I hear you. I understand where you're coming from completely. But I think that this, that the resolution, the substance of it was considered by the prior commission. Mr. Warren, the point I am trying to make is that the prior resolution really wasn't legal, maybe, at that time. And it should be canceled or rescinded. And it should be a new resolution considered today. You are considering an amended resolution today. You are doing essentially a new resolution. It's an amended resolution. It has the same substantive terms, just two less parties. But I understand what your point is. Does Mr. Ellis want to make a presentation and maybe answer our questions? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, Joseph Ellis, Manager of the Estancia Valley Solid Waste Department. What question would you have? Well, the question is, why do you need this loan? Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Ducharme, the equipment that the 
Estancia Valley Regional Landfill began with in 1998 is aging equipment. And uh, the compactor uh, that we acquired in 1998 failed. It's not repairable anymore. So that compactor has to be replaced. At the current time, we are using the compactor that was donated to us by the town of Long when they joined the authority. But it's a compactor that's uh, about 30 years old, and it's not reliable to continue to use going forward. So we have to have a new compactor. Can we release that uh, new compactor you are trying to buy now? We actually signed a lease for that compactor, and um, the board originally voted to, uh, to get a loan to buy it. But in order to, uh, to get the compactor on board in a timely fashion, the board also said, let's go ahead and sign the lease, which ordered the compactor and, uh, and delivered it. So it is, it is being leased now. And there will be a loan, this loan here, that's, that our member entities will, um, will cooperate with uh, to pay for this compactor. So you are leasing that compactor you are trying to uh, buy with this loan, right? That's correct. Uh, for how long are you leasing? For that? five years. For five years. For how long uh, this loan uh, would be? It's a six-year loan. Okay. Um, so by the time you pay the loan, the compactor will be uh, 11 years old? No, actually, um, when we do the loan, it will buy out the lease. So um, the loan is only going to go for six years from now. Okay. And you are already using uh, that compactor for five years, right? The, we signed the lease, uh, which is goes into effect this month. But when we, uh, when we sign the loan, the loan will take out the lease, and we will no longer have a lease on it. I'm not talking about lease. I, I'm talking by the end of this um, loan, how old uh, the machine will be? Six years. Uh, you said you, you have been using it for five years already. No. Or it is, it is five years old right now? No, it's brand new. It was just delivered to us uh, the last week of December. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, about maintenance, um, if you lease uh, the equipment, who is responsible for its maintenance, for uh, expenses for the maintenance? Actually, the, the purchase is, uh, is a better deal as far as warranty and maintenance is concerned because we're buying it on a, a New Mexico state purchasing contract, which gives us an enhanced warranty and maintenance period that goes for uh, five years instead of the 24-month uh, warranty on the machine. The lease does not give us any more uh, maintenance than, than a purchase does. So why uh, the purchase is better than uh, lease to buy? That's a very good question. And it's because the interest rate on the loan is 0.085%, uh, something like that. And the, the interest rate on the lease is 4%. So the cash out over the period of time is $40,000 more for the lease than it is to purchase it through the New Mexico Finance Board. So you are borrowing mo money to lease that equipment? No, we're borrowing money to buy it. No, no, no. You said 4% uh, interest rate on money you, s you are spending to lease it. The, that's the cost of the lease, is a 4% interest over the purchase price of the machine. When the loan is paid off, the 
Estancia Valley Solid Waste, uh, Solid Waste Authority will be the owner of that equipment. Is Free that and right? clear. But not the, the entities that um, uh, bring money uh, into it, right? The entities have an ownership equity in the Solid Waste Authority such that if the authority was ever dissolved, once the uh, liabilities were satisfied, then any assets remaining would be divided among the member entities. Um, how much debt uh, is the authority? Does the, the authority ha have right now? About one and a quarter million. Okay. Um, how, how much debt the county uh, has? Does does the county have? I would have to look at our own budget and the, the debt schedule is in the budget. Do you know approximately? No. Um, do you worry about uh, having such a big debt? Have we not borrowed a million dollars from the New Mexico Environment Department in 2010, the landfill would be closed. But you will have to pay more than 10 years, maybe 12, maybe 14, and you know the exact uh, amount of years after this uh, current cell uh, be closed in about four years, correct? That's correct. Do you think it is um, good practice to pay for so many years after you can't use uh, that cell? One of the problems, Commissioner, that we have had over the life of the authority is the uh, county contract. For about 12 years, we had taken proceeds from the landfill operation, and we had underwritten the county contract that we had with the county of Torrance. We have now, uh, our board has decided that that will no longer continue, and that's why the county commission had to raise the fee to meet the costs. If they had done that 12 years ago, we would not have had to borrow that million dollars. When you were, uh, before, boards for other entities, you said we need to have these two additional um, members to um, be able to borrow money. Now you are able to borrow money without uh, those members. What changed? I was referring to other equipment replacement that's going to have to take place. Uh, next on the list is a 623 uh, scraper, uh, which costs about $750,000. Um, we are going to the legislature and ask for a capital outlay allocation of $350,000 of that. We have $200,000 in our um, capital development fund, the board does, that can contribute to that. And then another $200,000 will have to be borrowed from the New Mexico Finance Authority. We need the uh, ESGRT revenues represented by Guadalupe County and the city of Santa Rosa to enhance our borrowing capacity so that we can acquire that 623 scraper. Beyond that, there's also a, a bulldozer, which is about a six hundred to $650,000 piece of equipment. And then a loader, which is about a $450,000 piece of equipment. So you can see that we need the uh, financial capability going forward. So we should expect um, to approve more loans in the future? 
I would, authority? I would anticipate so, yes. Commissioners, do you have other questions and uh, I would like no, to I discuss? No, I do not have any questions. Do you have any questions? I don't have any. If not, I'll ask for a vote. No, sir. I, I wanted to discuss uh, between uh, us uh, here. Um, Uh, here um, on page two, uh, at the very uh, bottom of the page, uh, it says, whereas there have been presented to the governing body of Torrance County and there presently are on file with the county clerk this resolution and the forms of the loan agreement and the Torrance County Intercept Agreement, which are incorporated by reference and considered to be a part here all. Where are um, loan agreement? Where is loan agreement? <coughs> Where is a Torrance County <coughs> Intercept Agreement? It's uh, in the uh, section that yeah, I said they're, that. They're not the loan agreements that are not part of this. Uh, I seen Harris as before as the governing body of Torrance County determined for him to act that he may lawfully pledge revenues and payment him off under the law decree. Those documents will have to be revised as well to take the other entities out as as the resolution was. But the first step to establish a closing date on the financing is the resolution. So how can we uh, authorize by this resolution the execution and delivery of the loan agreement if we don't have it and we don't know what are the terms of that loan agreement. The loan agreement was actually presented on December 10th. It was part of the packet as well as the, uh, the other documents. I think that was a portion of the It's a new commission. I don't think the documents. Um, this amended uh, resolution should be, um, must be approved by this current commission, and this document should be presented to this current commission. So, uh, page 9, section 4, findings. Torrance County hereby declares that it has considered all relevant information and data and hereby makes the following findings. Uh, I, I want to read uh, under B. Money is available and on hand for the project from all sources other than the loan are not sufficient to defray the costs of acquiring the project. I don't see any documentation supporting of that. Money is available on hand to the project their home source that are then loan are not sufficient to defy the cost of that project. Well, this, well, this is a finding that you make uh, in the resolution that is supported uh, by by the by your budget and, and by the amount of your revenue from your solid waste tax receipts. And, and that's the 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 receipts tax that are going to be intercepted. Okay. And it's all grocery stacks that are going to be intercepted for the project. Right? Yes. Yeah, that would be a question for the administration. Mr. But that's what it's referring to. Is if, if that's the my, my question <coughs> for council would be 
on this whole project. Um, it means that we are in agreement with the former commission and then amended a little bit. And so are we going to go on the whole thing to go through with it? I can't hear him. You're, you're asking me if you can and amend everything is legal. the resolution. The resolution, yes. And then the resolution that was adopted by the former commission. Then I would call for the question. Okay, you know what, I'm gonna, I just want to be in, uh, if there's questions involved, I'm going to do a roll call vote. District 1? Yes. District 2? No. District 3? Yes. Resolution passes in the 2 to 1 vote. Having no further business, I ask motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Meeting adjourned. <coughs> Will the microphones and so forth be used at other meetings, or are y'all going to stop doing that? I don't have a key to the cabinet okay. because I haven't had nobody's work since we decided we had to um, schedule this meeting. I haven't had a chance to get a key from the clerk's office, so I can't turn them on without a key. Okay, thanks. Oversight. Okay, I need you guys to. No, we just need one signature. I have to record the vote.